Hello. So today I'm going to read the Ampalatika Vahulavara Sutta Instructions to uh, Rahula at the Mango Stone. And first I will be starting with a reading from the chapter of four, which is four verses um, as an introductory reading for the Venerable Rahula. Here we go. I am known as Fortunate Rahula because I am endowed in both ways. I am the son of the Buddha and I have the vision of the Dhammas. Since my defilements have ended, since there is no more being reborn in any state of existence, I am an Arahant, worthy of offerings. With the three knowledges and vision of the deathless. Blinded by sensual pleasures, trapped in a net, they are smothered over by craving, bound by the kinsmen of the negligent, like a fish caught in a funnel net trap. Having thrown off those sensual pleasures, having cut Mara's bond, having pulled out craving, Roots and all, I have become cool and realized Nibbana. And that was the introductory reading from the chapter of fours. This is four, four verses. And now we continue with the Ambalatika Rahulavara Sutta Instructions to Rahula at the Mango Stone. I have heard that on one occasion the Blessed One was staying near Rajika at the bamboo grove, the squirrel's feeding ground. At that time Venerable Rahula was staying at the mango stone. Then the Blessed One, arising from his seclusion in the late afternoon, went to where Venerable Rahula was staying at the mango stone. Venerable Rahula saw him coming from afar, on seeing him set out a seat and water for washing the feet. The Blessed One sat down on the seat and, s and the seat set out and having sat down uh, Venerable Rahula washed his feet. Venerable Rahula bowing down to the Blessed One sat to one side. Then the Blessed One having left a little bit of water in the water dipper said to Venerable Rahula, Rahula, do you see this little bit of leftover water remaining in the water dipper? Yes, sir, said Venerable Rahula. That is ha that's how little of a contemplative there is in anyone who feels no shame at telling a deliberate lie. Having tossed away the little bit of leftover water, the Blessed One said to Venerable Rahula, Rahula, do you see how this little bit of leftover water is tossed away? Yes, sir. Rahula, whatever there is of a contemplative in anyone who feels no shame at telling a deliberate lie is tossed away just like that. Having turned the water dipper upside down, the Blessed One said to Venerable Rahula, Rahula, do you see how this water dipper is turned upside down? Yes, sir. Rahula, whatever there is of a contemplative in anyone who feels no shame at telling a deliberate lie is turned upside down just like that. Having turned the water dipper right side up, the Blessed One said to Venerable Rahula, Rahula, do you see how empty and hollow this water dip is? Yes, sir. Rahula, whatever there is of a, of a contemplative in anyone who feels no shame at telling a deliberate lie is empty and hollow just like that. Rahula, it is like a royal elephant, immense pedigreed, accustomed to battles, its tusk like a chariot 
like chariot poles. Having gone into battle, it uses its fore feet, its hind feet, its fore quarters and hind quarters, its head and ears and tusk and tail, but keeps protecting its trunk. The elephant trainer notices that and thinks. This royal elephant has not given up its life to the king. But when the royal elephant, having gone into battle, uses its forefeet and hind feet, its forequarters and hindquarters, its head and ears and tusks and tail, and it and his trunk, the trainer notices that this notices that and thinks this royal elephant has given up its life to the king. There is nothing it will not do. In the same way, Rahula, when anyone who feels no shame in telling a deliberate lie, there is no evil, I tell you, he will not do. Thus, Rahula, you should train yourself. I will not tell a deliberate lie, even in jest. What do you think, Rahula? What is a mirror for? For reflection, sir. In the same way, Rahula, bodily actions, verbal actions, and mental actions are to be done with repeated reflection. Whenever you want to do a bodily action, you should reflect on it. This bodily action I want to do, would it lead to self-affliction? to the affliction of others, or both? Would it be an unskillful bodily action, with painful consequences and painful results? If, on reflection, you know that it would lead to self-affliction, to the affliction of others, or to both, it would be an unskillful bodily action with painful consequences painful results, then any bodily action of that sort is absolutely unfit for you to do. But if on reflection you know that it would not cause affliction, it would be skillful bodily action with pleasant consequences, pleasant results. Then. Any bodily action of that sort is fit for you to do. While you are doing a bodily action, you should reflect on it. This bodily action I am doing, is it leading to self-affliction, to the affliction of others, or to both? It is an, is it an unskillful bodily action with painful consequences and painful results? If on reflection, you know that it is leading to self-affliction, to the affliction of others, or both, you should give it up. But if on reflection you know that it is not, you may continue with it. Having done bodily action, you should reflect on it. This bodily action I have done did it lead to self-affliction, to the affliction of others, or to both? Was it an unskillful bodily action, with painful consequences, painful results? If, on reflection, you know that it led to self-affliction, to the affliction of others, or to both, it was an unskillful bodily action with painful consequences, painful results, then you should confess it, reveal it, lay it open to the teacher or to knowledgeable or to a knowledgeable companion in the holy life. Having confessed it, you should exercise restraint in the future. But if on reflection you know that it did not lead to affliction, 
it was a skillful bodily action with pleasant consequences pleasant results then you should stay mentally refreshed and joyful training day and night in skillful mental qualities whenever you want to do a verbal action you should reflect on it this verbal action I want to do would it lead to self-affliction to the affliction of others or both would it be an unskillful verbal action with painful consequences and painful results if on reflection you know that it would lead to self-affliction to the affliction of others or to both it would be an unskillful verbal action with painful consequences painful results then any verbal action of that sort is absolutely unfit for you to do but if on reflection you know that it would not cause affliction it would be a skillful verbal action with pleasant consequences pleasant results then any verbal action of that sort is fit for you to do while you are doing a verbal action you should reflect on it this verbal action I am doing is it leading to self affliction to the affliction of others or to both is it an unskillful verbal action with painful consequences painful results if on reflection you know that it is leading to self affliction to the affliction of others or to both you should give it up but if on reflection you know that it is not you may continue with it having done a verbal action you should reflect on it this verbal action I have done did it lead to self affliction to the affliction of others or to both was it an unskillful verbal action with painful consequences and painful results if on reflection you know that it led to self affliction to the affliction of others or to both it was an unskillful verbal action with painful consequences and painful results then you should confess it reveal it lay it open to the teacher or to a knowledgeable companion in the holy life having confessed it you should exer you should exercise restraint in the future but if on reflection you know that it did not lead to the affliction of others it was a skillful verbal action with pleasant consequences pleasant results then you should stay mentally refreshed and joyful training day and night in skillful mental qualities whenever you want to do a mental action you should reflect on it this mental action I want to do would it lead to the affliction would it lead to self affliction to the affliction of others or to both would it be an unskillful mental action with painful consequences and painful results if on reflection you know that it would lead to self affliction to the affliction of others or to both it would be an unskillful mental action with painful consequences painful results then any mental action of that sort is absolutely unfit for you to do but if on reflection you know that it would not cause affliction for you or for others it would be a skillful mental action with pleasant consequences pleasant results then any mental action of that sort is fit for you to do while you are doing a mental action you should reflect on it 
this mental action I am doing is it leading to self-affliction to the affliction of others or to both is it an unskillful mental action with painful consequences and painful results if on reflection you know that it is leading to self-affliction to the affliction of others or to both you should give it up but if on reflection you know that it is not for uh, self-affliction and to the affliction of others you may continue with it having done a mental action you should reflect on it this mental action I have done did it lead to self-affliction to the affliction of others or to both was it an unskillful mental action with painful consequences painful results if on reflection you know that it led to self-affliction to the affliction of others or to both it was an unskillful mental action with painful consequences painful results then you should feel distressed ashamed and disgusted with it feeling distressed ashamed and disgusted with it you should exercise restraint in the future but if on reflection you know that it did not lead to the affliction of you or for others or for both it was a skillful mental action with pleasant consequences pleasant results then you should stay mentally refreshed and joyful training day and night in skillful mental qualities Rahula all those Brahmins and contemplatives in the course of the past who purified their bodily actions verbal actions and mental actions did it through repeated reflection of their body bodily actions verbal actions and mental actions in just this way Rahula all those Brahmins and contemplatives in the course of the future who will purify their bodily actions verbal actions and mental actions will do it through repeated reflection on their bodily actions verbal actions and mental actions in just this way all those Brahmins and contemplatives at present who purify their bodily actions verbal actions and mental actions do it through repeated reflection of their bodily actions verbal actions and mental actions in just this way thus Rahula you should train yourself I will purify my bodily actions through repeated reflection I will purify my verbal actions through repeated reflection I will purify my mental actions through repeated reflection that's how you should train yourself that is what the Blessed One said gratified venerable Rahula delighted in the Blessed One's words Sadhu 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 and that was the Ambalatika Rahulavara Sutta instructions to venerable Rahula at the mango stone thank you so much for listening and may you find true peace happiness and freedom from suffering and keep practicing and reflecting thank you have a wonderful day